Hollywood, 1989. Amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young Disney world at the height of its golden age, the Disney MGM Studios was a star in its own right, a beacon for the show business elite. Then, something happened that changed all that. The time is now to celebrate 35 years of Disney's Hollywood Studios with the largest ever in-person gathering of those who created its magic. The Imagineers who brought you the great movie ride. Muppet Vision 3D. And of course, as you may recognize, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. We'll present never before seen stories and artwork from the Hollywood that never was but always will be. This event is somewhat unique in that it will offer a meet and greet and autograph session, as well as two days of star-studded panels and presentations. We invite you, if you dare, to register at stage89.com to attend this event either in person or via streaming, or just to get more information. And all event proceeds travel directly to Give Kids the World Village. This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks around the world. Here now the news for March 11, 2024, and I will warn you, there is a ton. So let's get started. The current president of Walt Disney Imagineering, Barbara Booza, has announced her departure from the company. Booza, who joined the Walt Disney Company in 2020, took to Instagram to say her goodbyes before she leaves next month. She's been the president of WDI since November of 2021, taking over for Bob Weiss, who, of course, is coming to our Stage 89 event. You guys know that. Uh, she noted that WDI will still be under the leadership of Chief Creative Officer Bruce Vaughn, though. Um, I'm not going to read you the whole Instagram post, but let's, we need to talk about this for a second. Um, so Barbara was, bought, uh, was brought in in 2020. This is during the Chapek regime, which, um, you know, there, there are plenty of stories out there about uh, under Chapek. The, uh, they weren't keen on hiring, and this is going to sound psychotic, and it, and it is, mind you. Um, they really didn't want people at WDI who were Disney fans. They really didn't want Disney people working in or operating that division. Yeah, it, it's pretty dumb. But that was a thing. And so Barbara came from Gensler. Gar uh, Barbara Garber. Barbara comes from Gensler and has it, the, the resume I think they were kind of looking for at the time. Um, I think obviously they're looking to diversify. And on top of that, she had what they would consider real world experience because for some reason, we don't consider what Imagineers have been doing for 60, 70 something years now, um, you know, real world experience. We only invented an art form and, and perfected it in that time. Um, but so Barbara was brought in, she replaced Bob, but, but for, from all accounts I've ever been told, Barbara was really just a figurehead. She wasn't really doing much. Um, so it, 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 this has zero effect. Um, I, for me, it's probably a writing on the wall thing. I, I would highly doubt anyone in the company was willing to fire Barbara for a number of reasons. Um, so I think it had to be on her, uh, her own accord. And I think, um, I think the writing was on the wall for her. I think, she, I think Barbara wanted this on her resume. It's a hell of a thing to have on a resume that you were the uh, president of, of Walt Disney Imagineering. I'm, I'm sure she has something lined up for the future. And uh, uh, I, what's interesting to me is that they're not saying that there will be another president. They're just saying that, that uh, Vaughn will be in charge now, even though he has a different title. Um, Jake, if you scroll back up, I, I, I'm so bad with these titles. He's, oh, sorry, she, he's, she, it's actually not a weird title. It's a pretty common one. Chief Creative Officer is, is Bruce Vaughn's title. I'm so used to these, you know, uh, corporations having these crazy titles we have to remember for people. But no, he's just Chief Creative Officer of WDI. Um, so it sounds like he, Bruce will be operating 
WDI in her absence, they may not have a president to replace her. It's probably not necessary. Um, I know there was one particularly wacko comment in, um, I think, on the news over the weekend. Guys, by the way, that show isn't live. The, the show you're watching now is not live. We pre-record this. So I, I saw people, some of you, you know, were very sweet and just came in and like, oh, what about the news about Barbara? Obviously, we recorded the show on on. Friday, that was before she announced she was leaving on Saturday. You know, we have a show on Monday, we'll talk about it on Monday. But someone came in and immediately began to blame Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Guys, please, I, I beg of you, <laughs> please apply some logic. I don't believe in the history of WDI that very often anyone, never mind the president of the company, has been, been let go over one attraction. I will remind you that the people that built rocket rods kept their jobs. Like, they continue to work in the company uh, after rocket rods happened. That's, it's not a thing that happened. So, no, no one is sitting there thinking, oh, Tiana's by adventure is such a disaster. I better, I better bail. That is, that's not a thing. It's not a thing, right? The judgment is still out on that attraction, but I assure you there is no internal thought right now that's like, ah, this is, this is such a disaster. We better get out of here. I know some – look, I'm sure some of you are rooting for it. I know there's a lot of people that really – are against that project, and I get it, right? I love Splash Mountain. There are three giant pieces of Splash Mountain art sitting right by my cubicle just outside this wall. I love Splash. We had 30 years to fall in love with it. It's one of the greatest things they've ever done. I, I will forever cherish it. But as I've said before, I'm gonna let them cook. I may hate it, I may resent it the same way I walk by the Chinese theater and I resent Runaway Railway every time I see that thing. Um, but I, I don't know yet. I gave Runaway Railway a fair chance until I wrote it. I wrote it and I didn't like it. And I'm going to do the same for Tiana and we'll see, we'll see how I feel about it then. And I, I think everyone should do the same, right? I, I understand your favorite attraction was taken away. Like mine was too. Great Movie Ride was mine and it was taken away. And I still sat there and was like, maybe they can do something that is even better. Did they? In my opinion, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, um, it is what it is. But we'll, we'll see with Splash. Give them a chance. Let them cook. You need to get that on a shirt, right? I'm sure no one's ever made a shirt that says let them cook. That's not a popular phrase or anything. Um, but no, this is, um, this, we knew this was coming pretty much when, when Bob Chapek was removed from the company. It was inevitable that Barbara Booz's time at WDI was not going to last forever. So it, this makes perfect sense. And I think, again, it's more signs that we're heading, in, in my opinion, we're heading in the right direction. I think it's going to be a really big year for WDI, at least on the announcement front. I think we're a couple months away from, from some exciting announcements, and uh, we'll talk about that more as the show progresses. The new multi-day dining reservation search feature for Walt Disney World restaurants has debuted on the official website. Previously, guests had to select a specific day to see the available dining reservations. Now, guests can select a window of one to ten days and see all open reservations for a particular restaurant. The option is listed under each restaurant at the bottom of the section. The link reads check availability for multiple days with a small calendar icon. It leads to a new page where the directions instruct users to select one to ten days on the calendar to view dining availability. Once the first date is chosen, it will highlight the maximum length for the search. Uh, the range selected is shaded in blue. Clicking Next generates a new page with a list of the selected dates. And beneath each date will be the available times or a message that reads, there are currently no times available for this day. Great, great to see this option. The first day of spring is around the corner, and in celebration, the Magic Kingdom has a new spring popcorn mix. The spring popcorn mix is $15.99. It's caramel popcorn with M&M's milk chocolate candies, crushed vanilla cookies, mini marshmallows, and white and yellow chocolatey drizzle. You can read the review at WDWNT.com. It's, of course, available at the confectionery. The large earth sculpture has returned to Mission Space at Epcot after refurbishment. The outside of the attraction, known as Planetary Plaza, has been undergoing a slow refurbishment with pavement design updates and planet refreshes. Tracks from the NASA Perseverance rover uh, were added, and Jupiter was recently refurbished as well, but now Earth has been restored. Earth is located in the attraction's marquee. The planet was removed back in August of 2023 and now is just returning over six months later. 
This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and their team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. And the best part is their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. Springtime Dine at Hollywood and Vine begins soon at Hollywood Studios. And to celebrate, Minnie Mouse is set to get a new look and a new dish is joining the breakfast menu. In a post shared by Disney Eats on Instagram, we got a look at Minnie's new outfit for the season when Springtime Dine returns to Hollywood and Vine on Saturday, March 16th. In the photo, Minnie is seen posing outside of the restaurant in her new dress, a bright floral look with coral pink accents on, at the sleeves and waist uh, with a matching bow by her right ear. In addition to Minnie's new outfit, a new item will join the breakfast menu. That's the chicken and donuts. As the chicken and donuts are breakfast only, guests will have to attend Disney Junior Play and Dine to try it. So just a weird nitpicky thing real quick. Disney Eats Instagram posted about these two changes and mentioned springtime dine at Hollywood and Vine. The chicken and donuts are not at springtime dine at Hollywood and Vine. They're at play and dine at Hollywood and Vine, which is the Disney Junior offering. They're two separate things. Maybe make a separate post. Because, you know, because some of us are like, oh, I need to make a reservation. And then you sat there and thought about it and go, well, if I go to the breakfast reservation, I can't see Minnie. And if I go to the lunch reservation, I can't eat the chicken and donuts. So now I'm doing neither because it's, I'm not eating there twice in one day. I have to draw the line somewhere. Doc on Dar's newest limited edition uh, item is the Asajj Ventress lightsaber hilt set. Uh, we first found the set at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios. It's also available at Disneyland Resort and on DisneyStore.com now. The lightsaber hilt set is $399.99. The legacy lightsaber hilts are available at, at the counter of Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. This set is a limited edition of 4500 split between this location, Disneyland, and Disney Store. An individual version of Asajj Ventress's curved lightsaber hilt was available at Doc's uh, when it first opened in 2019, her reforged lightsaber was released on May the 4th, 2022. Ventress, a Sith assassin, and her lightsabers were introduced in the Star Wars The Clone Wars film. And throughout the following series and other Star Wars media, she wielded two lightsabers uh, that could be attached to, the f to form attached to each other to form one S-shaped hilt with two red blades. And this legacy lightsaber set includes both hilts. The hilts come in a square box with a decorative uh, with decorative arrows and curls across the top. A metal latch is in the center of the box. It has four triangular hinged pieces that open. A black square of foam in the top keeps the hilts protected. The Certificate of Authenticity lists the edition size and labels this as set number 699 of 4500, so they are individually numbered. The card also calls it the Disciple of the Sith Legacy Lightsaber set, and a quote from Asajj is there as well. The two hilts come uh, crossed on a red velvet pillow inside the case. They were separated when we photographed them because one was on display. We're only allowed to handle the hilts minimally since there are so few sets. Blades are sold separately. Ventress's hilts will illuminate in red with the blade inserted, and the hilts can be attached at their bases just like in the Clone Wars, but users will need an Allen wrench to unscrew the bottoms of the hilts to put them together, which cast members did not have on hand to demonstrate. Disney's Animal Kingdom has a new matcha cupcake inspired by Expedition Everest and the fearsome Yeti who resides inside the mountain. The Everest cupcake is available at Pizza Safari on Discovery Island. The quick service location is open from 10.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. most days. The cupcake is 6.29. It's matcha cake, milk chocolate mousse filling, chocolate buttercream, crispy pearls, and a white chocolate Yeti image, which doesn't move just like the real one. You can read the review at WDWNT.com. Speaking of reviews, uh, I recently went over to Disney's Blizzard Beach Water Park to try all of the new food for the season. Yes, I know the season is ending. Um, I, actually I actually filmed most of these back in November, but the churros eluded me for several months. But I finally finished. Hopefully these items will hang on. Either way, you could read about these items, including the two best churros I've ever had at Walt Disney World at WDWNT.com. Or we do have a video review you could watch right here on the channel. And if you watch that review... Um, you can enter to win a, uh, one of those sand pails from the water park. So check it out. After Disney CEO Bob Iger seemed to call the Avatar offering coming to Disneyland Resort a land, Disney is still calling it an experience. 
Iger first announced an avatar experience would come to Disneyland Resort during the February 2023 earnings call. He implied that California's experience would be a version of the Pandora, the world of Avatar Land at Animal Kingdom. In March of 2023, a D23 post said the new experience would be as amazing as the Walt Disney World Land. And at one point, a Disney representative said the experience would be a Disney California adventure. But Disney then released a statement saying no official announcement had been made. Of course, during a Q&A at the Morgan Stanley Technology, Media, and Telecom Conference, Iger implied the new Avatar experience would be a second land. I'm, I'm going to go a step further. He didn't imply that. He said it was a land. Um, we have one Avatar based land, Pandora, in Florida. We're going to put a second one in California at Disneyland. That doesn't mean we can't put one somewhere in Asia and somewhere in Europe, for instance. That's exactly what he said. There's no interpretation needed. That's definitely what he meant. Uh, anyway, however, a recap of Iger's comments from the Walt Disney Company continues to only say it will be an experience. So they have reiterated again, they've gone out of their way again to say it's not a land. What is happening? Oh, you're getting a rant. What is going on here? I assume Bob Iger knows what the project is. I'm sure he's seen models. I'm sure he's seen plans. I'm sure he knows what it is. But for some reason, Disney, whether it's the PR arm, is it WDI? I don't know who. Who is refusing to call it a land? And is it? Is he mistaken? Is he losing it? Has he been CEO too long? I don't know, but this has gotten crazy. We have been back and forth on this story every time. Now it's, it's crazy, just read that date. It's been over a year, for over a year. A quick recap again. Iger announces they're building something in scope similar to the land at Animal Kingdom. Disney then says it's an experience. They reiterate that. Then, then an Imagineer says it's in California Adventure. Like four hours later, Disney says, it's not in California Adventure. We're not announcing anything at this time. Iger then says again that it's a land. And Disney again counters that and says, it's an experience. What is it? What is this thing? Is it an, is it an attraction? Is it a ride? Is it a land? Is it a walkthrough? What is is the Avatar thing at Disneyland. Disney, I am begging you to tell us what, it's not even that I'm excited about it. I just need to know at this point, what is going on? Uh, we don't, I don't even need to know the contents. I don't care. I just want to know if it's, if it is Pandora or if it's not Pandora. That's, that's what we need to know at this point. But you're driving us insane. Driving us absolutely insane. I didn't get that. I don't get it either, Siri. I have no idea. <laughs> we'll move on. A key vote in the Disneyland Forward project is set to take place today. On Monday, March 11th, the Planning Committee in Anaheim will vote on the Disneyland Forward proposal. The previously announced Planning Commission meeting will mark the first vote on the plans. According to the Orange County Register, the Planning Commission is made up of seven members who will meet at 5 p.m. Pacific time today to place their votes. The public can watch the meeting via the Anaheim City Council and Planning Commission meetings YouTube channel. If the Planning Commission approves the Disneyland Forward proposal, it will then need to be approved by City Council. That meeting is scheduled for April 16th. In their proposed plans, Disney is committing to spending $2.5 billion on the Disneyland Forward expansion over the next 10 years, with a minimum of $1.9 billion going to the Disneyland Resort itself and $30 million into affordable housing in the area and at least $8 million uh, for, for city parks. Um, again, we filmed this earlier in the day. That's still many hours away at this point. So just head to WDWNT.com if you're watching this after um, that has happened. We will certainly have the announcement on the site as soon as we know if it has been approved or not. While visiting the Disneyland Resort today, we saw that the new turnstiles with updated features have been installed at the entrance of Disney California Adventure, following up on the permits filed late last year. The new turnstiles can be found on the far right side of the entrance if you're facing the gates to California Adventure. At the time of publication, they're not in use. Multiple barriers surround the new turnstiles on both sides. Permits were filed with the city of Anaheim on December 8th for updated park gates at Disneyland and California Adventure. Those plans also included these new turnstiles. 
The new turnstiles are quite open to allow strollers, wheelchairs, and scooters to pass through more easily instead of that center gate that the cast members have to open typically. Uh, here you see the Magic Band Plus touch points that are installed on the right-hand side, just below a screen and a camera installed. Once in operation, guests with a Magic Band Plus can tap into the park as their form of entry, no longer needing to scan on a, uh, essentially an iPhone that the uh, cast members are using. The camera itself is embedded into a hidden Mickey built into the screen. And looking at the turnstiles from inside the park, we can get a look at how guests will exit the park through these new turnstiles and also see what the cast members will see uh, with their new screen there. Clear gates can be seen here, which can open once a guest is scanned into the park. Um, of course, also facing guests, there's that camera, so that'll be used for facial recognition. We've seen Universal uh, in Orlando is using this. This is the same system. Pretty much everyone but Walt Disney World for their ticketing system uses Galaxy, and I, I believe the current version is Galaxy 7. Um, and so it's not surprised that there's something similar going in here. These also look a whole lot like the scanners, uh, or the I should say the, the turnstiles in Paris look a whole lot like this. They're very, very similar. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're essentially the same thing. Um, but I hope this speeds things up because I hate that verification system every morning when people use new tickets and they have to take their photos. If that, if that device just takes it, we can get people in faster. Um, that'll be great. I also like that they, they, they went a little extra mile, right? They're like, could we at least put like a hidden Mickey on there? Because the current turnstiles are very plain. There's no Disney, you know, markings on them at all. So this is, in that respect, a, 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 you know, a step beyond. So the, these look great. Big improvement. Looking forward to these uh, being in use. And we'll, of course, show you them in use once they are. Greenery has finally been added to Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Disneyland. The California mountain has been gray during recent rock work. Uh, there is now a layer of moss, though, across the rounded top of the mountain turned salt dome. As we know from Walt Disney World, this greenery is just the beginning. The dome will eventually be covered in flowers and other foliage. More moss has been added on the rocks across from the front and sides of the facade, visible behind scaffolding. Crew members were working on the greenery on the left side of the mountain when we were there. We also saw a crew member lower down next to the mill house. The mill house will also likely be repainted uh, like it was in Florida. Fake trees will also eventually be added to the swamp in front of the mountain. And down in the flume of the attraction are several construction materials. Large white bags are full of debris crews have torn down from the nearby rockwork. And wires hang out of one hole in this reddish brown cliff face. And new wire frameworks have been placed within the holes since we last saw a crew member literally inside of one. But work continuing, of course. Tiana's Bayou Adventure opens this summer at the Magic Kingdom, will open later this year in an unknown time frame at Disneyland. Did you know there's a way you can save big at Disney Deluxe Resorts? Well, today's show is brought to you by DVC Rental Store, a great way for you to plan a luxury Disney vacation on a modest budget. You don't need to sign up for a full DVC contract, but instead they will allow you to rent points you need for a magical stay. It really is the best way to stay deluxe at a fraction of the cost. And now, thanks to their lowest price guaranteed offer, you'll always have the best price on the market. The rooms are discounted up to 75%, and they have the largest member inventory for points, so there's a lot to choose from. You can search their availability for free right now, which is not something a lot of rental companies offer. And if you do choose to book, they have a great cancellation policy and a low down payment. DVC Rental Store is the number one DVC rental company in the United States and one we personally have used many times. In fact, if you've ever watched a, a Vacation Club room tour, even from before they were a sponsor, um, that's who we were using to, to get that at a fraction of the cost so we can bring you those room tours. So please check them out. Uh, read the description below for more information. Disney Cruise Line has revealed the Sea Trinkets merchandise collection that will be available on the Disney Treasure when it launches in late 2024. They previously shared a look at some of the Haunted Mansion parlor merchandise. These new items, though, also draw inspiration from the Haunted Mansion, as well as 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and the Jungle Cruise, as well as the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, or Sea. Each porcelain coaster in this set features a graphic inspired by one of the Disney treasure venues, including the Haunted Mansion parlor, the Skipper Society Lounge, and the Periscope Pub. The set comes encased uh, by a three-dimensional barnacle-encrusted box. A mixology set comes inside a sea-worn box with a sculpted adventurer's compass. The mixology accessories are inspired by Disney Parks attractions and Disney treasure venues, including the bottle opener resembling the Haunted Mansion's door knocker. This ceramic bronze planter features the giant squid latched onto the Nautilus from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Disney describes this as a decor piece. The giant squid tentacles are wrapped around a vintage uh, scuba helmet with glass inside. 
This jewelry set is inspired by Sea, an organization woven through many different Disney Parks attractions around the world. The necklace pendant is shaped like a key with the Sea logo on the handle. The mismatched earrings resemble a star and a ship's wheel. Lastly, this notebook also draws inspiration from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and The Society. The dark brown cover is embossed with a giant squid. A bronze key shaped uh, like a ship's wheel holds the notebook closed. The Sea Trinkets collection will be available at select merchandise locations aboard the Disney Treasure, which of course uh, will set sail this December. We of course will be there on the maiden voyage to bring you all of these. And this is what everyone's most excited about, right? Uh, the bars. These, these bars are, I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Tokyo Disney Resort has added several more restaurants to the Disney Mobile Order Service, which launched in November of 2023. Mobile Order at Tokyo Disney Resort works similarly to the Walt Disney World and Disneyland services. Guests can use the Tokyo Disney Resort app to make food selections, order, and pay. They then pick up their food at a scheduled time. When Mobile Order launched at Tokyo Disney Resort, it was only available at Plasma Ray's Diner and Grandma Sarah's Kitchen in Tokyo Disneyland, as well as the Casbah Food Court and Yucatan Base Camp Grill in Tokyo Disney Sea. The service is now expanded to include the following locations at Disneyland. There's the Tomorrowland Terrace, Captain Hook's Galley, Huey, Dewey, and Louie's Good Time Cafe, Pecos Bill Cafe, the Hungry Bear Restaurant, Camp Woodchuck Kitchen, and Troubadour Tavern. At Tokyo Disney Sea, you'll find it at Dockside Diner, Cape Cod Cookoff, Miguel's El Dorado Cantina, which I still should be, I still think should be Miguel Dorado's, but never mind me. Zambini Brothers Ristorante and Sebastian's Calypso Kitchen. All these restaurants will continue to offer counter service as well. Tokyo Disney Resort has shared the new merchandise that will be available during Donald's Quacky Duck City, which will run from April 9th through June 30th. The merchandise collection includes apparel, hair accessories, candy, stationery, and more. You can see it all at WDWNT.com. Tokyo Disney Resort released the new Fantasy Springs Port theme song ahead of the area's grand opening this summer. Fantasy Springs will be the eighth port of Tokyo Disney Sea, the original seven being Mediterranean Harbor, American Waterfront, Lost River Delta, Port Discovery, Mermaid Lagoon, Arabian Coast, and Mysterious Island all received theme songs when they opened with the park in 2001. There has not been a new themed port added to the park since it opened, uh, so there was some interest in if Fantasy Springs would continue the tradition. Well, they will. You can listen to the Fantasy Springs theme song embedded in an X video on our website. The video also features clips of Fantasy Springs concept models, posters, cast member costumes, food, and merchandise. And a shorter snippet of the theme song is also in the commercial for Fantasy Springs as well. The music is reminiscent of songs from Frozen and Tangled, which are both featured stories in Fantasy Springs. The lyrics tell guests to come inside. What story will you write? What dream will change your life? We'll find out on June 6th. The Shanghai Disney Resort has announced to shareholders that they are building another new attraction on the heels of the recently finished Zootopia Land and amidst the construction of their third resort hotel. As the resort enters the Year of the Dragon, resort shareholders and management continue to show optimism about Shanghai Disneyland. Recently, the resort began initial preparation work for construction of a separately themed attraction to be located within Shanghai Disneyland adjacent to Zootopia. The project work is at the initial planning stage, and resort shareholders and management look forward to providing more updates as work progresses in the future. A rumor emerged several months ago that a new multi-launch roller coaster may be on its way to Shanghai Disneyland. It may very well be the project announced here, but only time will tell. As stated previously, the attraction will be located in an expansion pad located just to the right of Zootopia. It'll uh, not be part of the land. It'll likely be based on a different Disney intellectual property, which, of course, again, we do not know yet. Shanghai also provided an update on their upcoming third resort hotel. In August 2023, leaders from Shanghai Disney Resort's joint venture shareholders broke ground on construction work for the resort's third Disney-themed hotel. This week, the Hotel Development Project Management Team completed piling work, a key phase in the, advancement, in the advance of the start of the superstructure construction. Located on the shores of Wishing Star Lake, when completed, the 400-room hotel will provide guests with even more accommodation options. They also provided this aerial photo you're looking at now, which shows the current progress on the hotel. As for that attraction, again, it's unknown when an announcement about the attraction's content will be made, but it could be made as early as the ultimate Disney fan event that's D23 taking place in Anaheim August 9th through the 11th. But again, Shanghai is a joint venture, so it's not just Disney that owns the resort, so the Shanghai group may want to wait and announce it on their own terms. We'll have to, again, hate to say it 50 times, but we'll have to wait and see. 
For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, and it was a lot because you saw this was a long episode, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to all of our Wigs members watching who make this show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. From WDWNT TV, this is Park Center. Join us each week for news and discussion topics from the Disney and Universal theme parks around the world. We cover the stories in a quick, concise, and fun format, and then our panel breaks down and debates some of the biggest issues and what they mean for us, the Parks fans. From the latest announcements to openings and delays to scandals and snacks and merchandise and more, we'll cover it all in 90 minutes. Join us live every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube at WDWNT-TV or watch episodes on demand anytime. You can also subscribe to the audio version of the show on your favorite podcast app.